streaming for the first time. Let's see if we can find an actual URL for this. Share link. Share. Twitter. Let's see if this works. Maybe it's just going to shut up. It's on a loop. No, we're back. Good. So, Stephen Wolfram has been streaming his company meetings and you can find them here. So it's not just Twitch, I thought it was just Twitch, but it's also Facebook Live and YouTube. And they're up to 147 episodes, which I guess means 147 hours of content um, of selected meetings within Wolfram Research and I and I guess maybe Wolfram Alpha. Um, of their just day-to-day -day business. And that made me think that anyone could do this. So what I want to talk about first is Glider, which is this thing that's basically dead, but I built, or I had built maybe a year ago, two years ago. And the idea of this thing is very simple. Let's see if this works. Alexa, what is one plus one? One plus one equals two. Good. But so I that think you knew that already. Yeah, I did know that already. So if you go to Google and you type something like "what time is sunset," it will tell you it's seven six fifty p.m., which is wonderful. But if you ask it, so it, in order to compute this, it has to know where I am. I'm in Castle Rock, and it has to know uh, the time, and it has to know some maybe some bits about orbital physics and then it will tell me it's 650. It's not super difficult to calculate if you know where you are um, and what day it is. But then it knows that the answer is 650. But if I ask it how long until sunset, it doesn't know. Which is kind of bonkers if you think about it because it does know how long because we just answered the question, what time is sunset? It's 650. And maybe I could even ask it tomorrow and it knows that it's two minutes earlier because uh, we're moving towards winter. So it does know the time, but it can't do the basic computation to tell me from now uh, how long until sunset. And let's see if Alexa can do this. Alexa, what time is sunset? Sunset is at 6.49 p.m. Okay, so what's interesting, it has a slightly different opinion. Maybe it has a different location. Um, Alexa, how long until sunset? Tomorrow, in Riddleton, the sun will set in 23 hours, 15 minutes, at 6.48 p.m. So Alexa knows, but Google doesn't, how to answer that particular query. And we can try other things. Let's try Bing. So what time is sunset? 8.06. So it has a completely different next Muslim prayer. Okay. It's not quite what I was going for, just sunset, but okay. Sunrise is at 6.51. And then we can try how long until sunset. And it doesn't know, just like Google. So the next thing we could do is Wolfram Alpha. Uh, what time is sunset? 6.49, so it agrees with Alexa, I think that was, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, it has a slightly different time again tomorrow, probably because the location is slightly different, but it's within 60 seconds, all of them, so that's fine. Um, and the nice thing about Wolfram Alpha is they respond to feedback. So if something goes wrong, you can hit here, gives you feedback, and you can say, hey, the location is wrong, which is probably based on IP address, so it doesn't really know where I am. And then enter, email your name, occupation, and so on. I don't know why they want all of this stuff, but they do. And then hit send, and I found that Wolfram Research tends to respond to you and actually fix things, which is awesome. So the point is that these computations, uh, it would be nice if they were open. 
So right now, if you go to Glider, which is at glider5.com, um, it doesn't really work because no one solved this query. So if I, if I say what time is sunset, it's going to fail. Um, it doesn't know. And you can, it gives you the option to create a solution or uh, rephrase it if you want. And similarly, how long until sunset, it doesn't know either. Um, however, if we go back to the home page, it does know a few basic things. Why doesn't it take me back? It wants a refresh. So I can ask it one plus one, and it will return two, and I'll explain why there's another answer in a minute. Or I could do 10 to the three and see what happens. And it says a thousand, that's a good answer. Um, I wonder what happens if I type pi, 3.141592, that's accurate. Um, what happens if I type E? Good. Uh, how about where am I? That will probably fail, I don't know, because the city in the IP database isn't working. Um, but there is another location query that does work, I just don't remember what it is. Let's go back to the uh, weather in New York, where am I one plus one, 10 days from now. So 10 days from now is a nice one. In 10 days, it will be su su uh, sorry Sunday, October the 7th. And the reason all this is interesting is that you can fork the code. So am I logged in? Yes. These things on the left here are votes just like Reddit. So I can vote up and down these answers, except instead of the answers being text written by people, uh, they're code written by human beings. So right here is a summary of the text. I wonder how can I zoom in? View, zoom in. So it's funny, simple plus, there we go. So this thing here, number plus number tells us what the code is doing. That's actually the pattern that it's matching. And then this is the user that wrote the code and then you have an option to uh, fork that code. So let's say I want to fork this code, I click that and it shows me the quote. So what it's doing is it's pattern matching an input number plus number and it's giving me the result, result equals number and it's doing it's casting the number. So dollar one is the first input, dollar two is the second input, it's casting it to number adding them together and uh, we're done. And someone's knocking on my door for some reason. Um, that's 7.38 p.m. I'm going to ignore that. So what does the other code do? We can ask. Uh, let's go one plus one because there's something else that failed. This one. So this one is just matching number and then the good answer is matching number plus number. So it's still matching which is fine. Um, however it's only returning number. So if we just type one, that will match number and it gives us the one. So it's probably just returning our number. So if I go one, two, three, four, five, six, it's just going to return one, two, three, four, five, six. Nope, it's not. Let's see what this code actually does. It casts it to a number, but it's not giving us the full number. That's weird. One, two, three, four. Let's see what that does. There you go. Five, six. Good. I don't know why that failed the first time. So I could fork that code and all it's doing is it's casting to a number, returning it, and then result is what's returned. So, oh, I remember the other location query. What is my IP? So there are some magic variables in the system too. This is my IP address and I can fork this code and you can see what it does. So again, it's giving us a result. It's first of all asking if user.location exists, and if it does, then the magic ampersands here will return user.location.ip, and there are other bits of that as well. So it's not just userlocation.ip, there's other parts. So what is my location? It does exactly the same thing. Uh, no, it wasn't what is my location, it is where am I. Actually, that's a good synonym. And it doesn't know, we look at the fork this code, result equals user.location. Oops, didn't mean to edit that. User.location and user.location.city. But if the city fails, then it doesn't know, and the city can fail for a variety of reasons. The system can know your latitude and longitude, but not know your city, uh, because maybe you're outside a city boundary, or the database isn't good enough, or whatever it is. So we can edit this code and make it better, and we'll go do that in a second. However, I just noticed that I typed something strange. Um, I think I typed what is my location. Oops, and I 
I can't spell location. What is my location? And it failed. So we're going to suggest a rephrase for this. What is my location is the same as where am I? Uh, let's do what is my location and we'll save it and run it. I don't know. So a synonym is exactly what it's what it says on the tin. A synonym takes a phrase like what is my location um, and edits it into something else such as where am I and then runs the where am I query then returns it and then we hit save. So I've now created the synonym so if I go up here and I hit my snippets under my synonyms where what is my location gets turned into what am I where am I so I go back to glider what is my location? It rewrites that query into where am I? Then it runs where am I, uh, which is run by this person, uh, XABI, Zabi, I guess. And then we look at their code and then it runs that code. We can also fork this code. So we know that this is failing uh, because it doesn't have the city. Now I know that user.location.city is null because the database that I'm using. Um, doesn't know the city for this latitude and longitude. So what I can do is I can turn user dot lo dot location dot location dot latitude, and I can try and run that, and it's going to give two answers. So there's my latitude. Um, two answers. That's the one run by Zabi with zero votes. Although that's actually better. So let's vote it up. And then it's going to give my answer, which is nonsense because it's just a big long number. So we could do, let's see what number does. With luck, this will turn it into an integer or something, except I suspect it don't. It won't, no. So JavaScript cast to integer. Pause int function. Uh, so let's see if this works. It's not clear to me. Uh, first of all, user.location.latitude could be a number, and so we don't want to pass it. If parseInt is expecting a string, but this is a number, this is going to fail, and also uh, it could fail for 55 other reasons, but let's just see if it works. It did. Wonderful. So it knows that my latitude is 39, so I could do something like latitude that and then see if that works. See if it concatenates strings. It does good. Latitude is 39. Uh, plus, long, oh, let's put an extra space in there. Longitude. This is an interesting question. Should latitude come first or longitude? Let's go with latitude. Uh, longitude. And should we have a space in between the colon and here? That's another good question. Uh, but let's just actually let's steal from here. Copy this. Copy that. Put space in there. Longitude. Save and run. So now I've created a new query. So now when somebody types where am I, they're going to get two results. The first one, if we don't know the city, this result by this person is going to say I don't know. And then this result uh, by me, and apparently I'm user 4960, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I'm going to give your latitude and longitude to uh, one, <laughs> one integer of precision. Um, let's see if we can cast and get like one decimal place, which doesn't mean integer. Cast with one decimal place. Let's see what that says. Round. Okay, round, blah, 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 to fix to, let's see what that does. So, uh, this, there's not a huge amount of debugging here, so I have to sort of do print line type debugging. I'm just going to do that um, to erase what my result was and then rewrite it down here and see what, see what it gets. See if it works. Oh, look, round is not defined. Okay, so the round function doesn't work in whatever version of JavaScript we're using. Uh, unless they have their own round function, which could be possible. Ooh, look, there's a pass float. Number.toFixed2, let's try that. Uh, da -da -da. So number.toFixed, and a number isn't an object in JavaScript like it is in Ruby. 
So let's do this. Number equals 42.2222222. Results equals number dot two fixed two. Let's see if it looks like that. Two fixed two. Approximately. Let's see if that works. Good. So now we know how to round a number. So instead of parsint, we're going to do two fixed. And let's give it one decimal place of precision. Let's remove this. Uh, and then this error is sticking around because of a bug. It should just go away, but it doesn't. Sorry. Uh, there you go. There I've got my one decimal place of uh, just, uh, precision here. And it's apparently automatically casting the number to a string, which is good. That error should really go away. Maybe this little cross does that. No, it doesn't. Well, why is the cross there? Missing semicolon, expected an identifier instead, so bracket. Yeah, okay, because there's that bracket. So that should go away. Good. Dot two fixed one. And then save and run. Okay, now we can clean this up a little bit because we can say result plus and then result equals you are at location uh, put a semicolon there just in case it complains save and run it you're at location blah 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 and it knows where we are um, but if you're in a location where it does know the city, instead of I don't know, this is going to be accurate. It will say Timbuktu or London or Paris or wherever you are. Um, and we've saved it. Let's hit save. So now what have we done? Let's go back and look at my snippets. So I've done two. I've created a synonym, which turns what is my location into where am I. And I also have created another snippet for where am I which is this bit of code that we just edited. And it still thinks that there's an error there, <laughs> which is clearly a bug. So now if we go back to the home page, and where am I? There we go. Now normally this one's going to be better, because it, it will say London or whatever city you're in. And so you'll vote this thing up. Um, and I've already voted it up, so I can't do that again. Um, and if that fails, then there's also this one. So what else can I fix? Well, there's my username here. That's clearly wrong. So let's go profile. Let's make a user. Let's do Steve C. Oh, let's learn how to type Steve C. Save. I guess that's save. Let's try again. Go over here. Where am I? It changed it to Steve C. That's good. Um, so I guess there aren't any other Steves, although I think I had another username called Steve. So let's try and save it in Steve and see. Yeah, good. So usernames have to be unique because it had an error. So now let's talk about the charts. So these are the charts of stuff going through the system. These are the last queries. So the, the thing to know about these queries is that they're all uh, case insensitive. So the cases are ripped out, and I think white spaces are ripped out, and question marks. So what that means is, where am I? Um, it's the same as where am I question mark. It's the same as where am I with a capital I. It's the same as where am I. They're all the same. So they're all pretty much sent to lowercase, blank space removed, and question marks removed. So let's go back to the charts. So these where am I, where am I, where am I, where am I? Those are all identical queries as far as the system is concerned. What is my location is turned automatically via the synonym that I built into where am I? Uh, what is my IP? And then these are other things that I've, I've done. How many letters in the word frog? And these are all clickable, by the way, right? So let's click that. Ooh, looks like other people have been forking this code. So how many letters in the word frog is being matched by something and you can see this is a regular expression let's uh, zoom in on this so you can see it how many letters are in the word and then that's some regular expression magic uh, which created by my other user which I don't even remember how to log in with uh, but let's fork this code and see how it works so first thing that's defined is a function to create the to find the length of some text 
and then we return the length of some text. So I'm not sure that that entirely makes sense. Oh, okay. So dollar one here is the thing that's matching. That's the word. And then we're finding the length, and then we're probably subtracting two, which might be what that is, because there's the quotes on each side. And then you also want to remove the question mark if that's part of the question, because frog, if frog is, uh, hold on, what was the actual query, was it? Frog, so that should be four, right? So why are we getting five? Probably because there's a bug. So we could fork and fix this. Maybe if I add a question mark, something else happens. Four, yeah. So something is, so there's clearly a bug that if I don't have the question mark, the number is wrong. So it keeps on switching. That's slightly strange. That's very strange. Let's just ignore that. Back to the charts. So there's bugs that you can go fix. People have been entering other queries. So any query you enter into this thing is going to be public. And anybody can browse through the latest queries. So people have entered yeah, in which country? Boston. Uh, what is the capital of Canada? Capital of Kathmandu. But I thought Kathmandu was the capital. But anyway, is five prime? That's a much nicer question because uh, it's mathematical. Let's see. Yes. And let's see how. Oh, look, there's all the things that I've done. Is five prime? Let's fork this code. So, what does this do? It gets the number, turns it into a number. As a result, if it's less than two, then it's cleaning up prime, and then it just has a very simple algorithm to go and find if it's prime or not, and in the end return yes, if it is prime, and no, if it's not. So is yeah, let's type some big number and just see what it does. Prime. <laughs> no. Uh, however, other people have also created other things. So starting from the bottom, this just matches number. This matches number. This is someone's broken code. Uh, well, actually, I don't know if it's broken because it gives the same answer for this number. This one is, yes, that's broken. And then mine is probably not broken. And mine gets the most upvotes. And I'm going to give it another one. So you can usually rely on the top one. So if you just ignore the bottom answers, and you were, let's just say you were talking to a system like uh, Amazon's Electra or, or Google, um, OK, Google, then you'd only get the top answer. But the system here gives you all of them because you could just hook this up to a conversational interface. Alexa is 57,905,000 prime. No, 57,905,000 is not prime. Right. By the way, a nice thing you can do with Wolfram Alpha that's really actually super useful is you can say 1 million plus 6. Um, and it will both add the English written numbers and the numerical numbers for you, like this, which makes it very nice if you just want to type quickly and you don't want to try and compute in your head how many zeros you're missing. Uh, so anyway, we can ask this system lots of queries and anybody can write JavaScript to answer them, which is quite nice. Let's go back to the charts. So these are the latest queries. This is what people are answering. The unanswered queries, these are the top things that people have not answered yet. Uh, and we'll go and solve some of these in a second. Uh, who is Steve Coast? Uh, how cold is it in Toronto? So anybody can log in and you can click on these things and solve them by clicking over here. The top queries are the top things that have been asked in some period of time. Square root four, that's interesting. And again, you could quick click these, run them, see if they work. What are the most used bits of code? Well, number is going to match anything with a number because they're, they're quite greedy matching so you can go do whatever you want uh, random password this is actually one of my favorites so if we type random password it's going to give us a random password of, of one two three four five six seven eight nine ten bits so ten characters and if we look at the code for this there's my char set so it's capitals capital Latin letters, lowercase, plus the numbers, plus a few crazy characters. Um, and it just goes through and creates 10 random characters and then returns it to you. And the reason this is cool is sometimes you want a random password. And I go like that, I get my random password, and then I can, uh, if 
it will let me select that's going to crash or something right it's going to let me select it and then I right click and I can copy or it's not letting me copy for some reason let's reload the website and see what that does why is it not letting me copy alright there you go copy so there's some weirdness with the system and the reason that's cool is that that's one of the limitations with War from Alpha. Uh, I type random password, and it will give me a random password. Uh, except I can't copy and paste this; it's an image, which is completely cool, and it gives me some other random passwords and so on. Um, and there's there's nothing wrong with that, and I like War from Alpha a lot. And probably if you uh, pay for the service, I could copy and paste that. But I just really want to copy and paste this thing and then go use that string somewhere. I wonder what happens if we type random number. Okay, well there's a famous joke here, so let's create a solution for this. Uh, result equals 42. Because 42 is pretty random. Uh, random number. 42. So I'm pretty sure that's a Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy joke. Anyway, you can go and fix it if you want to. So where are we? So there's the last queries, there's our top unanswered, top queries, the most used pieces of code basically, and then the top voted. Um, so the top voted thing is how many letters in the word, even though that that's broken, which is kind of annoying, so we should go fix that one day. And then here are the, the things that get the most votes. And you can see it's sort of long tail-ish, so 60, 33, 33, 32. Um, E tomorrow, tomorrow I think gets just rewritten as one day from now because that's just a synonym. So, if, but anyway, and then there's top users. So there's me, and then there's some other random people. Um, so we can go fix some of these things, and that's why we have these charts is that you can go in and fix them. So the top unanswered query is capital of Wyoming. So we can solve this. So let's go wiki capital of Wyoming, Cheyenne. Uh, let's look at this. Cheyenne is a city. It's in the bottom right of southeast of Wyoming. Great. So let's do, and there's two ways of doing this. We can just return the string Cheyenne like this. Uh, save and run and then that works we can also if you want to be explicit you can do result equals like this and then that should work too and then we hit save and then if we go home it's no longer here because we've now answered that query so if we do capital of Wyoming there it is it's done that is correct I'm gonna give it a vote Cheyenne so uh, we can also just for fun, go and create a, a synonym for this. So, what is the capital of Y? What is the capital of Wyoming? Run this, and it knows the same. So, we're using the two letter state code for the same thing. What is the capital of Y? And there we go. So, it's the whole thing's a big open source computational engine thing. Um, you know, clicking at the top left should really take you home, but it doesn't. So that's another bug that we should fix. All right, let's fix the next one. Uh, so as well as these charts at the top right, you also get unanswered queries on the front page and the top queries as well. So some of them are easy, some of them aren't. Reddit, let's see if we can solve this. So what happens if we type Reddit? Does it really just fail? It does fail. Now there is a way to give a link. I don't know, let's see if it's like this, reddit.com. See if that works. Should create a link. Well, that's correct, but I don't know. It's like, I don't know how the, there is a syntax for giving a link, but I don't remember what it was. So let's go find Steve again. Well, first of all, let's delete this just in case it does something. So Reddit, how do I delete this thing? Delete. All right, so I no longer want that. And then let's type one plus one. 
and then that will give me Steve stuff and then I'm pretty sure in here there's a link I guess not maybe it's broken there is a way to make a link work in the system so you could just cl click it and go to reddit or any other website Google there we go let's see if that's what it does Google why isn't this clickable all right let's try just typing it Google right so there's the link so now we're gonna find out how to do it oh uh, so we just paste it into HTML so we're gonna copy this we're gonna go to our snippets we're gonna create a new snippet and the pattern is reddit and we're gonna do this and then we're gonna type reddit like that and I'm pretty sure the HTML is sanitized somehow <laughs> but maybe it's not um, so now if someone types reddit they're gonna get a link to reddit.com in HTTPS which is a good thing we hit save go back home type reddit and then there's reddit great so let's go back home again and find what the next one is what is glider well that's a good question my name we don't know your name let's just go through these uh, from top to bottom help how are we gonna solve this glider <laughs> uh, is a computational system edited by people like you for more I don't know what you do for trying to find out more. Try clicking on things and editing code. Let's see if that works. It's probably not the best help message you could possibly get, um, but it's better than nothing. And, it, and you can also go fix it, right? My name. All right. Sorry, I don't know your name. Full stop. All right, next one. Hello. Hello to you. Done. Undefined. <laughs> That's a good one. How would you respond to undefined? I wonder if that's what happens when you get when you just hit with an empty string. So if I do a number and then hit a query, because it won't let me hit the button with an empty string, but maybe Q equals blank and it's the same as undefined. Nope. Maybe it's literally the string undefined. Hmm. Let's just say, sorry, try something else. Let's see if that goes away. All right, undefined went away, so let's try un undefined. Find. Yeah, so that worked. In the meantime, let's see. Oh, no, not Twitter. Let's see if Twitch is actually working here. It's just playing ads. And there have been five people view it. Okay, so it's not dead. Just people watching Galaxy No adverts. Good. Um. Let's go back to the beginning. Or oh, let's not because it failed. Glad of five. Unicorn weather. Someone can't spell. How about did you let's fix this? Did you mean weather? Let's see if that runs. So we can fix all these things, cat, unicorn, most of these things are meaningless. Let's go to the charts and see if there's anything that's actually meaningful that we can unanswer queries. Who starred in Fantastic Four? I don't know. Where is London? <laughs> oh, that's easy. Uh, oh, look, tomorrow, that is a misspelling. So let, we can fix that. So let's go to my snippets, create a synonym. Uh, tomorrow, so we're gonna respell tomorrow. How do you even say that? Tom Roro to tomorrow. Hit save, and then that's fixed. Go back to charts and answered. 
What is the standard deviation of Poisson distributed variable? That's a good question. I have no idea. Let's see if Wolfram Alpha can actually answer that. Wolfram Alpha. You know, let's bet money that it can. chunk. No, it can't. Gives it a good attempt though. It, it, it tries hard but it can't answer it either. Uh, these are actually answer queries. How many letters? I think that's an answer query. Uh, how old I am? Date. Now date is something that should work. Let's try date. No. Huh. So if we try tomorrow, it will tell us, right? And we can then use this code to get the date. Blah, blah, blah. D dot day, D dot month, blah, 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 blah. So D dot get to UTC date. Let's see what the actual response was for a second there. So it says tomorrow is Friday, September 28th. So we just want that for today instead of in the future. So let's just copy this code uh, and create a new snippet for date. And then let's paste this code for tomorrow. And instead of plus one, we can, because tomorrow is today plus one, we can remove that, put date, and Thursday, September 27th which is correct in UTC, but it's not actually correct in my time zone. Uh, this is a really interesting question. D.setDate, E.getDate. So, okay, so I don't need that. So I don't need, actually I don't need any of it because date is probably instantiated by today. So I can just drop all that and I get uh, today's date for, today today equals new date and then there's some code down here that's it's been painful about showing me uh, that's what's going on okay so we want today dot get date today dot get month today dot get UTC date and then today dot get UTC date and then the, that nth function is just giving us the last two, so it's like the last two characters are TH here, but it could be the 22nd or the 3rd or the 4th or whatever. So let's run that and see if that works. Uh, so it's still correct, but it's correct UTC, it's not correct in my time zone, which is a bigger problem that I don't know how to solve. But what we're going to do is we're going to say UTC at the end, and then at least we're correct while being useless at the same time. Uh, so we're 100% correct about the date, it's just not where you are. Then we go back, we hit date, and the system screws around for a while and it tells you at least the time in UTC, but I'm going to give it an upvote because I can. But you can go in there and fix that and modify it for the time zone. So I wonder, let's see, JavaScript, find time zone, let's see what that says. Get in the client's time zone in JavaScript, blah, blah, blah. get time zone offset. I wonder, is that an hourly thing? Time zone offset is the difference in minutes between UTC and local time. So I wonder if that's a number, that sounds like a number. And then if maybe we add that number, it will give us the correct time. To get the correct time zone in JavaScript, you should use International date time format resolved options time zone. Ah <laughs> oh dear. Well, let's see if that works. So let's fork this code and we're just gonna sort of debug at the bottom. So we're gonna overwrite our result and see if that works. Gives me UTC. Oh, uh, because it forked to create a new version of this thing, which I did not want to do. So we go back to my snippets and it's got, it's probably going to have two of these dates things. You know, there's one of them, which is the one I like. And then here's the broken one, which I just created. So let's delete that. So let's go back to this one and just edit this. Go back to JavaScript 
and C. You did a. Let's copy this and let's just result that just to see what it says. Zero. Well, I'm clearly not in UTC, so I have no idea why it thinks I am. Let's try this. Uh, JavaScript get current time in time zone. Let's see. I don't want the time zone. I just want the actual time. Let's see what this says. Today dot get time zone offset. JavaScript's date function can only return local date and time. So for some reason, it actually might think I'm in UTC, which is odd. Oh, now I understand why. So the reason this is not working is because this JavaScript is being executed on the server. So if we bring up our developer console, no, I don't want to disable JavaScript. I want to bring up the JavaScript console. Show JavaScript console. Ta-da! Console. So one plus one. So that does two. Good. Um, new date. Good. GMT minus six Mountain Daylight Time. So the browser knows what time zone I'm in. So we're just running around in circles because this is running on the server and the server is currently in UTC. So we need some way to get the JavaScript date in here. Sorry, the client date. And I have no idea how we do that. Someone else can fix that. All right. Uh, top on that's questions. What is Glider? Well, let's synonym that to help. So my synonyms plus what is Glider, and then synonym to that to help. Go back to charts, unanswered. When is spring? That's a really good question. Let's see what Wolfram says. When is spring? It's like the 1st of April or something. March 20th. I guess it shifts every year, or is it every year is at the same time? Ooh, lots of different days. Let's see what Google says. Alexa, when is spring? During 2018, spring in your current location began on Tuesday, March 20th and ended on Thursday, June 21st. So I don't know whether it's March 20th or it's the first, I don't know, Wednesday or something. So I don't know. Someone else can answer that question. Uh, what is my name? I don't know. Unicorn cat. What is time? Now that I do know the answer for. So let's do this. Uh, my snippets, create a new one. No, it's not a synonym. It's a new snippet. What is time? Time is the linear passage of events whereby, and now my memory fails me. Time is the linear passage of events whereby, let's see what that says. Well, that doesn't help. There's a dictionary definition of time, anyway. Time is a linear passage of events. Sort of like most of physics, it answers the question without answering anything whatsoever. Um, snippets. All right, let's go back to charts, unanswered. Where is London? Well, we can answer that too. London is, is in the United Kingdom, which is a country in Europe, I guess. And let's also test that other one. Uh, what is time? Time is linear passive events. Good chance unanswered. Let's go to the bottom. Is the water blue? Well, sometimes weekday, don't know what that means. Day of week. Well, that's kind of interesting. That's another date question we can answer. What day is it? Now that looks like something that we can synonym. What day is it? Uh, which is correct for UTC. <laughs> it's not correct for our time zone, but whatever. 
So let's create a synonym for that misspelling that we just found. My snippet synonyms. Uh, they missed a space here. Uh, let's add the space. Delete the question mark because it's irrelevant. Hit save. And then, oops, no, no, don't do anything stupid, Apple. Right, go back home. What day is it? And it runs the correct synonym. So that's a success. Uh, let's go to the chart, see if there's anything else that's interesting. Top queries. Is five prime, blah, 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 blah. Square root four, let's see if that works. Square root four is not four. <laughs> um, and that's just because it's matching the first number it finds, which is number. So if I just type four, it's going to return four under that. Uh, so let's try and fix that. Although it should still square root. Should really give me the option because it wasn't a direct match to just create a new snippet, um, which I'm going to go and do manually. So square root, and then I think we want dollar one, and then result equals number dollar one. I wonder if number integers things or if it works for floats. We shall find out. Um, How do I do the pattern matching? I'm gonna to have to go learn how to do the patching pattern matching again. Is five prime that would give me the yes it is, thank you very much. So it's just number in brackets. Okay, so I can go back to my snippets and then I can just do this number and then square root. 54 and I sh the result right now should just get 54 good 54 now what we have to do is do the square root which I don't know how to do in JavaScript JavaScript square root Let's see what it says well of course it's just the SQRT of course it is SQRT uh, let's give it a number I actually know the square root of let's do well, it's not matching. Why is it not matching? Oh, because it's failed. Square root is not defined. Oh, uh, let's try math.square root. See if that works. Yes. So math.square root is what it wants. Um, let's give it some 1.4 and see if that actually works. Good, so that gives the square root of a number. So we can say the square root of, and then plus dollar one is, and then should we put a space here? I always wonder about that. Do you put a space after the colon or not? Let's do it. Save and run, and it failed. Probably because I didn't have the plus there. Okay. So run again. The square root of 1.4 is 1.1832, blah, 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 blah. Um, so now we've saved that and now we can answer that question. So now anytime someone says square root 56, there we go. And now you could hook this up to a conversational system and just say, and just grab the top answer and just read that out loud. So, Alexa, what is the square root of 56? The square root of 56 is 7.483314773555. So it does it to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Is that, was it eight decimal places? I don't remember. Anyway, they do less decimal places, so it doesn't matter. And then we could have some synonyms of this thing that allow us to rewrite this. But I don't know. Let's see if we can rewrite that as what is the square root of, and then will it do the 
variable passing. That's what we want to do. Number. And then we want to synonym that to square root dollar one. And square root of what did I say? Fifty six. Let's see if that works or if that fails. Square root of number by Steve. Huh. So I've already done this in a different context. Uh, so I could have just synonymed square root to the square root of what is the square root. So we're creating layers upon layers of synonyms here. However, it's all good because the whole system works and allows us to do this. So top on answer queries. Who is my senator? I don't know without a database and location. Now Kaplan do, isn't that the capital of let's see. Uh Wiki. Yeah, it's the capital of Nepal. So I guess what we want to say for that one where are we? is cat and do is the capital of Nepal. Even at nonsensical, we're going to give us uh, an answer that actually makes sense. Taringa. I've got no idea what that means. Let's see. Taringa, Queensland. Wonderful. Uh, where is Brasilia? Well, Brasilia was that design city for Brazil, right? Um, ideally, we'd throw a map of you. Oh, look, tomorrow. We, that's one we can solve really easily. Tomorrow. My snippet synonyms tomorrow. And then let's just test it. Good. So we just fixed a spelling mistake. That will never happen again. Uh, let's go back to unanswered. Console.log this. Well, that's very clever. Uh, but that would have failed, I think. How many letters in foo? Durango's in what country? How old is Donald Trump? That's an interesting one because we have to use today's date, know the date of the, the party, do the subtractions. Uh, day of week. That's a really good one. I don't know what the day of the week is. That's a good question. There's another date one. So, oops, let's do day of week. It doesn't know. So, let's do today. And then we can just fork this code. And instead of today, we're going to do day of week. And instead of all this other stuff, we're going to do that. And we're going to do, let's clean this up a little bit. So today equals new dates. Let's do today. And we don't need this function. And actually, we don't need the months. Goodbye. So that should give us day of a week, let's see. Ta -da! Which is correct in UTC, but not correct for my time zone, but we'll figure out some way to fix that some, more, some other time. So, uh, you know, let's clean this up a little bit more. Let's say today is, uh, let's see if that works. Today is Thursday, good. So let's do, go back. Uh, force it to reload uh, today Thursday no that failed so why did that fail let's go back to my snippets day of week. oh it was day of week that's what I was supposed to type let's try that again day of week today is Thursday so let's talk a little about what happens when you hit enter here let's go back and type something else so it's like let's type some numbers numbers plus numbers and then you'll see this loading animation that loading animation I built a while ago what that does is takes takes your input goes and does some stuff with it uh, sends it to a docker container which contains the JavaScript that we've been building runs the JavaScript and executes it and then throws result back to you. So it's all very simple. Uh, and the system's completely extensible. The, I guess what other things have we done? Well, let's do, where am I? 
your location, latitude, longitude, right? And that's fine. But let's try and do what country I'm in. Uh, well, let's first of all check it's not already done. So what country am I in? And it doesn't know. So let's create a solution for this. What country am I in? And it's going to be result equals user dot location and then user dot location. Oops, location dot country. I think. Let's try that. Here you go. Perfect. And then I think this. What's the magic? It's something like or. What does Alexa say? It says like I'm not sure. Alexa, chicken dinner fifty six nine hundred and twelve pie. Sorry, I don't know that. Sorry, I don't know that. Sorry, I don't know. How about that? Save and run. I'm in the USA. Good. So we've created all these snippets, some of them have votes, some of them don't. We created these synonyms, go back to the charts, unanswered. Which country is London? London is not a country. Uh, when is spring? Uh, I'm tempted to try and actually answer that, but I won't. What is economy? <laughs> What is my location? Well, okay, well, there's there's one that we all oh, look capital in Nepal. We know that the one that's Kathmandu. Um, let's create a synonym for that just because we can quickly. Synonym. Da, 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 da. Save and run. Test it. Ew. That's weird. Why didn't that work? Save and see what happens. Go back. And see if the synonym worked. No, okay, something very strange is happening. Where's my location? Oh, because it's a double synonym. So I think what's happening is what is my location is already a synonym for where am I. So I need to change this for it, it won't chain the synonyms together yet. So where am I? Let's see if that works. Huh. What is my location? All right. Well, what about where am I? Let's see if that works. Okay, so that works. So why is the synonym working? Where is my location? Where am I? Let's try adding that to it. Just see if that works. Oh, I don't know. Looks like another bug to me. So that is Glider. And that's how this thing works. And so to recap, the whole problem with this is that you can ask some computational queries like what time is sunset and it knows that, but it doesn't know. Oh, come on. Let me type how long until sunset. It doesn't know, and it really should. The other one that I really want to be able to answer is this really silly one, like uh, what is the altitude where I am? Which these guys can answer, I guess. Let's have a look. Sure. Uh, kind of. Um, what altitude? Let's see what this guy does. I'm tempted, but all right. It thinks I'm at 1980 meters, which is fine, but it's not not actually super accurate, and also it's not in feet. Um, so, but we do know this because SRTM wiki. Ah, SRTM wiki. Ah, oh, gosh, no, I don't want the OpenStreetMap page. If I can avoid it, shuttle radar topography mission. So, a few years ago. Apparently, 18 years ago, we sent up a space shuttle with a big false aperture radar off the side of it, and it went around the entire world. I think it was plus minus 60 degrees uh, latitude, and 
they created a uh, elevation model for the whole planet plus minus 60 I think it was plus minus 60 probably says so something here and then they gave it away for free so we should be able to get approximate altitude for anywhere on the planet so we should be able to pull this data in although it's you know not a small data set and pull it in and answer questions like what is the altitude where I am although you could get that off a of GPS too but it doesn't um, the altitude on the GPS is about an order of magnitude less accurate than the latitude and longitude off of it which just means you need more data but it is what it is so we can answer all of these questions right like what uh, what country I'm in what's the altitude most of them are computational some of them should be slightly more than computational if if glider had more APIs it should be able to show you a map it should be able to play music set alarms send messages it could really do anything because it's so open-ended because it's just arbitrary JavaScript including calling third-party APIs but it doesn't today uh, because it's so basic which brings us to the question what should we do with glider uh, if nobody's going to use it it's probably kill it because the thing costs 10 or 20 dollars a month or something to run um, but there you go that's all I've got on glider uh, goodbye